Hello people of YouTube, my name is Brad, this is my channel Adam and Orange. Welcome to my new studio that I'm still in the process of setting up. You can see I've got a couple of shelves behind me, but well the shelf things, but actually no shelves on them. All my models are still sitting in boxes off to the side, but it is a work in progress. But also, welcome to another Metal Earth build video. Today we are going to put together the European Knight Armor, which was a viewer request video that it's taken me forever to get to because, you know, reasons and the move and many other things. But if we look at the back of the packaging, this is kind of on the slightly more than medium scale, a little bit on the hard side, but not terribly so. I've certainly seen more difficult. So let's go to the table, open this up, see what's inside, and put it together. Here we have the European armor. Let's see what's inside. I've already given it that little tap to get the instructions out of the way. What do we have here? Inside we have one metal sheet, instructions, more instructions, and two half sheets. How interesting. So we have one gold sheet, which makes sense because there's gold on the package. We have one silver sheet, and we have one full silver sheet. Or I should say half gold, half silver, one full silver put that to the side and honestly if we look back at the package there's some gold and silver in there mostly silver a little bit of gold that makes sense but there would at least be a half sheet of gold in there also I want to point out that this is listed as a kind of medium hard model according to the little scale down there but back to the instructions I'm going to open up the one oops, that has the Metal Earth logo on it because that's usually an indication that this, that this is where you start. Let me open this all the way up to the first page. Got some stuff in the way here. And we'll go over the instructions or assembly flowchart a bit briefly in case you've never built a model before or if this, you're fairly new to it. We'll go over it briefly, but not too. Not, I'm not going to spend too much time on this for those that have are already familiar with these models. You've got the Metal Earth logo, you got a line drawing of the model and one of the sheets, name and model number, you've got a QR code and a website. You need to scan the code or type in this website to go to where you can see a 360 view, download instructions if you've lost them. <clears throat> Though if you can still see this, you don't need to do that. Then below that you've got sample part with notations about insertion tabs, insertion holes, and fold lines. Insertion tabs ultimately go into insertion holes somewhere. Fold lines are just basically pre-scored areas where something bends or folds. You've got your legend. On the top you have an E which usually points at an engraved side or detailed side of the model. Any e is usually pointing at the non-engraved. So when they show you how to fold a part, they will tell you which sides you should be facing when you fold the part a certain way. A little finger like that means it's something you need to pay attention to. That's an attention point. Usually it has to do with alignment. Not always. So when you see that hand, try to pay attention and understand. Look around, see if you can't understand what it is they're trying to get your attention to. Usually it's make sure this part or this tab or this section aligns with that section. Because if you don't do it right, it won't work. And then you have the two things that have been in the model since the beginning. In the instructions, that's the blue circle and the green triangle. The blue circle means to insert a tab and fold it over 90 degrees. Green triangle means to insert a tab and twist it 90 degrees. Folded tabs are cleaner looking, but not as typically not as secure. The twisted tabs are more secure, but not as clean looking. And then we have some tips about tools and whatnot, but we'll talk about tools here in just a moment. Below that we have the full sheet and two half sheets outline of them showing the part numbers. I'll grab the full sheet of silver and try to line it up as it appears, no, perhaps this is it, yes. Got a little bit of a bend there, this package was mishandled. So as you can see, let me move this back on screen a little bit. As you can see, this is an outline of this sheet and all the numbers pointing at all the different parts. You'll also notice that several of the items, but not all of them, are colored in. Anything that's colored in the same color is the same part. For instance, 16. 
There are two part 16s. I'm going to just guess that these are probably like arm or shoulder or leg parts because you have pieces on either side that are the same. They number one, they color them that way you can find both of them when it comes time. And as you can see, there's several parts that have duplicate parts. There's parts that, that are unique, and so they're not colored in. And once we slide over to this page, to page two, we start the assembly flow chart. Starting, of course, with part one. There's a, what the part looks like flat. There's how you're supposed to shape it. And it gives some arrow indication of how to shape it. It's not that hard to figure out. And we have some blue circles indicating that these tabs go in and fold over in the appropriate spots. And then we have part two kind of a sub-assembly up here showing you part two and how to fold it and then these two parts come together down here this has got some more connecting these come together you end up with that and that's the gist of it you just go through following the arrows and following the little assemblies here's pointing at the engraved side it's facing apparently inward and the non-engraved side faces out that's interesting and those two parts come together there's part three here's part four they come together to that. We've got five and six which come together like this. Seven, connect, you got that. I just follow through doing as the instructions and assemblies say. Flip over from page three, then of course page four. And once you're done with that, you would grab the next sheet, unfold it, look for five, and continue on until you get to the last page where you will then be, then be complete, finished with your model. Let's talk a little bit about tools. The very basics of what you're going to need is a pair of tweezers and some clippers. The tweezers, you can do a lot of bending, shaping, twisting of tabs, folding of things over. The clippers are going to help you get the pieces out of the sheets cleanly and easily by clipping them out instead of trying to bend them out, which can cause damage. I've also supplemented my set with some precision tweezers. I have a couple of pointed ones here. One, I ground the tip down just a little bit to give it a more sturdy tip for tabs and twisting things. And then I have a precision flat set. And between all of these, I can do a lot of bending and shaping and twisting. I also strongly recommend some sort of pliers to complement your set. I have some flat nose here that have definite uses. I have some long needle nose pliers for some of the longer pieces. And then I have some curved tips for grabbing things at an angle and bending them over. For shaping a lot of curves and dome shapes and whatnot, you'll see me use an array of 3D printed tools that I've designed that you can find on my Etsy if you're interested. Otherwise, I've, you'll also see me pull out a cheap drill bit set that I have that's not sharp for shaping cylinder shapes, or just look around your house and use objects that you find, like dowel rods, pencils, maybe some beads to shape certain things. We've talked a bit about the tools that you might find handy, tools that I use got some of my basic tools to get me started, the instructions, and metal sheets more or less at the ready. Let's start putting this thing together. While it might be tempting to bend the tabs downward for a cleaner look, I advise against it. Instead, bend the tabs up and over. It might not look as neat, but it will hold the sections together better. This will be important when you are finished connecting all the sections and have to spread out the sides, putting stress on those connections.
Now that these sections are connected, time to coax the helmet into its shape. This is where those connections will be tested. Sometimes when attaching a part from one angle doesn't work, switch and try another angle. There are a few tabs in this build that need to be bent up from inside apart. I used my pointed tweezers to get the bends started, then switched to the tweezers that I ground the tip down a bit to get a better grip and finish the bend cleanly.
Rather than connect the ends apart 12, then attach the chest neck area, I decided to attach it and wrap part 12 around and then connect the back.
I didn't really catch it until later, but the instructions kept referring to which side was the non-engraved side except that both sides have engraving. One side has lots of engraving on it and the other only has an engraved line around the border of the part. It would appear from the pictures that the side with only the engraved line around the edge is the non-engraved side. Having said that, there is one exception. Part 19 does have more engraving on the so-called engraved side, but hopefully by this point you can see which side is the engraved side that they're referring to. This model gave me an opportunity to play with the tapers I 3D printed and see if they are useful.
Just a reminder that when the pieces that stack on each other, the engraved side is the mostly silver side that has a line etched around the border, not the highly engraved side. The exception being the last part, which seems to have some sort of crest or symbol on the engraved side. With rounded parts like the leg, it can be tough to get the seam where the ends connect to the curve as well. I have found that it can often help to pinch the tweezers right along that seam, firmly but not too hard. It helps to even it out so you do not have such a peak where the seam is.
more layering parts. I love how this layering turns out. It is at this point that it occurred to me that the non-engraved side actually seems to have more engraving than the engraved side, depending on how you look at it. Here I am showing the side that is very engraved looking, but it's not considered the engraved side. Then flipping over to show what the engraved side that they're referring to looks like with its single engraved line following the edge of the part. Lining these tabs up from the inside of a part with perforations on it took an extra dose of patience. It was not only difficult to see where the tabs were in relation to the slots, but I kept losing where the slots were with all of those perforations around them. Small adjustments are often necessary to line things up.
I started to just push the gold trim pieces down, but they didn't lay correctly, so I used tweezers to shape them. The instructions make an attempt to show you how to attach part 36 to the arm, but the angle that it displays is not entirely clear. I'm not completely sure that I attached the first one correctly, because I could not seem to get it to attach the orientation display. I wonder if the triangle was supposed to be facing inward. I did notice that the slots on the hand pieces were a little wider than usual to allow for the angled curve of that part to connect. After my recent Drogon build, I wonder why they didn't do that with that build. I can't exactly say that I'm pleased with how the angle of the hand turned out. Luckily, I can twist the arm a little to compensate. Thank you. 
I held the sword in place and saw how things would connect. I decided to fold the tabs that connect the sword to the hand down and forward to help them get into place. The camera card filled up just as I was connecting and bending over the tab for this first hand. The second hand was a bit more challenging. I think in part because that hand was attached at an incorrect angle. Part 49 attaches at an angle which causes the outer tabs not to want to line up. I had to twist the last tab a little to help line it up with the slot.
And that's it. It's all put together, finished and complete. And the model was not as difficult as I expected it to be with the gauge on the back being kind of on the hard side. It's a little bit easier. It's actually kind of a, a relaxing build compared to a couple of the ones that I've done recently. There wasn't really much in the way of frustration with this build. It took about two hours and 45 minutes to put together. And of course, as always, I'm going to do a re review video on this build That'll be coming up soon if it's not out already. As always, thank you for watching and keep on keeping on.